once again, as I, I tried to say at the beginning of this Holy Mass, it, it's so good uh, for all of you who are joining us near or far, all of us as seminarians and the faculty for this Holy Mass. It's such a, an encouragement, I think, for all of us to be together and to praise the Lord. So I want to begin uh, this morning by uh, apologizing again, because uh, once again today, I want to take you back to the, the, my first grade, okay? I often refer to Sister Estelle, and I think it's a credit to her for how much she taught us. Um, in those days, even in the 1950s, we used to call the four R's in Catholic schools, reading, writing, arithmetic, and religion. And uh, when we learned religion, uh, our textbook was was the Baltimore Catechism, you know, and, and in the Baltimore Catechism, we learned all the essentials about our faith. And as I was praying over the scripture passages for today, I couldn't help but think about the lesson in the Baltimore Catechism where Sister Estelle had to teach us as first graders what I like to call a $50 word, the word indelible. Okay, and that came into uh, one of the lessons where she was starting to teach us about uh, when we have a, an official relationship with God, and that that happens in baptism. And I remember Sister Estelle said, now boys and girls, remember when you are baptized, God puts an indelible mark on your soul. You can't erase it. It's always there. And the same thing when you get older and you receive the sacrament of confirmation, God is going to put an indelible mark on your soul. And she was trying to teach us that the relationship with God, at least on God's part, is never going to end. It's always going to be. And I remember her saying, and even if you know some people in your life who decide that they don't want to believe in God anymore and they were baptized, they're still baptized. From God's eyes, they are still his. They have that indelible mark. You can't ever unbaptize somebody. You can never unconfirm somebody. And I couldn't help but think that uh, that was really the lesson that Jesus was trying to teach in the gospel today. Now, now, we know that Matthew sets the tone. You know that we have these two opposing groups of people who are coming with a common purpose. They want to trip up Jesus. And I say they're opposing groups because on the one side, the Pharisees couldn't really stand any aspect of Roman rule. It was an offense to their religion. But with the Herodians, it was a whole different story. They loved Caesar. They loved everything that had to do with the Roman government. And um, so they present you know, this particular question to Jesus about, is it okay to pay the temple ta tax or not? And, and part of the difficulty was, uh, on the coin of Caesar's head also indicated that he was a god. And so Jesus was on to them but the hypocritical nature of them trying to sweet talk him when they were first going to ask the question, but he also realized that he wasn't going to fall into the trap. So here now we go back to the lesson of Sister Estelle. And what does Jesus say? Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And he says, look at this image. Whose image is it? It's Caesar's. And then he says, but give back to God what belongs to God. And what is he saying there? Take a look at yourself. Take a look at your image. And who do you see? And Jesus was trying to say, when you look at your own image, you are seeing God. When Sister Estelle told us about that indelible mark on our souls, yeah, and baptism and confirmation, you know, she was really talking about even something more basic. That at the very moment of our conception, at the very moment of our conception, there is the indelible mark of God the Creator on all of us. And so that's why Jesus says, taking a look at that reality, the power of who you and I are created in the image and likeness of God, that's not just an acknowledgement of what happened at the moment of conception, that is, in fact, the invitation of how we will, in fact, get to our ultimate destination in life. 
Give back to God what belongs to God. Give back to him who is in fact the creator of everything about you. And realize that you can't do that by yourself. And isn't that what we just heard in the first reading today from 2nd Isaiah? And while those words were directed to, uh, to Cyrus, they're really directed to all of us. I have called you by name. I have given you life. I am the Lord God and I alone have done that. And wasn't that what made uh, Paul so excited when he wrote the first of his letters, you know, to the church of Thessalonica? And he's all excited because he's hearing from at Corinth about how wonderful all the people in Thessalonica are doing about coming together in the name of the Lord Jesus. But he's also a little bit concerned because right at that point, they're starting to take bets with each other about when is the second coming going to come? And they're going to see who's going to win the bet. And Paul says, don't worry about that. Yeah, you're going to keep your eye on the focus of the second coming of Christ when, in fact, you'll be invited to come into the kingdom of God. But in order to get them, remember, you've got to work together. You've got to help each other to get there. And you know, my, my brothers and my sisters in Christ, boy, do we have to learn that lesson again. Do we have to learn that most important lesson about what we see when we look in a mirror? Not looking to see the way that we look, but who do we see when we look in the mirror? And it must, in fact, be God, our Father, who has created us in his image and his likeness. And you know as well as I do, we live in a world that wants to deny that reality up and down the pike. And we see it, especially in the ways in which we treat each other. I think many of you are aware that uh, two weeks ago today, right around this time, Pope Francis released his new encyclical, Fratelli Tutti. You know, the, the translation of that is, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. And, you know, Pope Francis began to write that letter uh, long before the COVID hit us in March and hit some of the European countries a little bit earlier. And, Fran and Pope Francis wrote that letter because he was remembering that 800 years before that, St. Francis used those same words, fratelli tutti, to a culture in which people were strongly divided against each other. They were missing the mark of who they were as co-workers in the vineyard of the Lord, people who were called to help each other get to heaven. And so Pope Francis imitated St. Francis in saying, let's not forget that, folks, that we've all been created in the image and likeness of God, but we've got to be able to use who we are as sons and daughters of the Lord to help each other get to heaven. And why Pope Francis wrote Fratelli Tutti is because of all the division that we see going on. You know, division one nation against another. And one race against another. And one gender against another. And one political party against another. And unfortunately, a division that continues to exist even in the church. And within the context of it all, Pope Francis, building on the teaching of Jesus today, calls us to take a look at Whose image do you see when you look in the mirror? And it better be God's image. Because you and I are, because God has made us in his image and likeness. Going back to Sister Estelle, when we as first graders cracked open that Baltimore Catechism for the first time, we learned two important lessons. Number one, who made you? God made me. Number two, why did he make you? To know, love, and serve God in this world so that I might be with him forever and always. My sisters and brothers, let's take a little bit of time today to take a look at the image that we see in the mirror. Oh yeah, we'll see our own faces but we'll see our faces because God has made us in his image and likeness. May we give praise and thanks to God for that gift as we ask him for the gift to help us to do what Jesus 
called us to do in today's gospel. What Paul exhorted the people of Thessalonica to do. What Cyrus came to know by the call of God in the Old Testament. Let's be so grateful for the gift of life that we help each other on the road to eternal life.